What is human augmentation? Higher or human AI augmentation is an approach when we combine the powerful attributes of a human mind with the powerful generative AI. And here I'm talking about generative AI of today. I'm not going to, into science fiction. So we start always with the human intuition. And in the case of practical job, it could be what we call educated guests. That means you are mixing your education with your vision power. And you start with the topic that you are going to do or the project you are going to do or the initiation. And let me give you an example, a comic show generated by AI. So in this case, you have someone who has humor-based intuition. He knows how to draft something that he knows people will find this funny. And then he chooses the topic, and then he would ask the machine, the generative AI, to propose jokes, topics related to his educated kids. And this is the first system. So start by human, he has intuition, human and then AI and then the AI will give him some output that's usually based on machine learning what you have feed initially the AI then the human will use his empathy love and again his education to pick what he likes combine them in a different way okay and this love loves what he got loves what he do not necessarily the love in the terms of sexuality. I'm talking about love in terms of what you love too. So in this case, you use your empathy, your powerful emotional intelligence to pick what you like, what you love, and then become a feed loop because you can give it back to the machine and ask him, hey, this one I like, this one I don't like. This one, do generate more stuff like this. Or you add more information from your educated guests again. And it's a loop. And in this loop, uh, the human will gather wisdom, but the machine will learn. And at the end, you have an augmented human intelligence that is not reached without the AI in the same time, of course, or the AI itself cannot do it. So you have really a human AI augmentation. And at the same time, you have ethical reason. Because if the machine generates things that you think it's not ethical or not correct, you have a human correct. So somehow you have a process of approval, not just a process of, okay, ChatGPT, tell me what to do in this and it will give you an out. No, you are really controlling the machine. And it's a feedback loop. That means you are nourishing the machine with your intuition, wisdom. And by the way, when they program, or started implementing large language models, they, do, they did what we call reinforced learning. And reinforced learning is practically what? It's using human intuition to tell the machine, this is good, this is not. So it's cheating. They call it machine learning. But when you are using the human intelligence to fight it, you are somehow cheating. You are using human intelligence to boost this machine learning and it becomes somehow Sumi machine learning if you want, because you are using the human to tell the machine what's good and stuff. How are we all going to become cyborgs? What do you mean? <laughs> Believe we'll become cyborgs. What will happen will amplify our own intelligence. But I don't believe that we will have to merge with the machine physically. We'll merge with the machine logic, or if you want, in terms of thought and how we are thinking. Until now, we are using somehow introspection. We are talking to ourselves. I call it a human being has the capacity when his of thinking or consciousness when the self is talking to the mind. And usually the self is talking to the mind using emotions and feelings. Emotions that not necessarily today, but all your life. And all kinds of emotions, from positive emotion of love to negative emotions like envy, like ego, like all, all this kind of negative emotion or positive emotion are really the introspection and consciousness. And then now for the first time, 
when you can talk to chat GPT, you are talking with a third somehow entity that is the generative AI. And generative AI has a lot of information. So somehow you are augmenting again your intelligence and yourself with a third kind of mind. It is very restrictive. It's pattern matching based. It's data based. It has no emotion, no envy. And when I say that, because we didn't code it, we know how we code it. In my book, I talk about sorcery somehow when people about to who, who program machine learning try to convince us it's sorcery. You program how the machine learning is doing, and then it can learn anything. Unfortunately, it's not true. It's just building a giant database that we call transformers. And when we call pre-training, that means we have approximated the data because that's what we are doing. We have a lot of parameters and we are training that neural network to adjust these parameters. It's a mathematical approach that is very known and famous to approximate. So again, you are building a giant structure called transformers, and then you have an algorithm to fill it up, you call it learning. Then you have a very ultra sophisticated tool Expect the information using what we call prompting. Because prompting practically is how you extract the information from transformers using the attention mechanism that they developed. It is practically spin checking version files when you have to guess what are the words. But in this case, it becomes not only a word, it becomes practically pages of information. So add this to the introspection when you have the cell talking to the mind and then add it to this talking to generative AI large language model and you have a huge augmentation. And with the loop that we are talking about and this loop, I didn't have it, but it's really how human behave, how human works. We just added to it generative AI. Recently, there was in Sequoia Venture Capital, a lot of presentation about how to use AI efficiently. They call that a schematic AI approach. And practically without knowing it's higher. It's really human AI rotation. And I wish I could to go and tell them, hey, you are using higher without knowing. Please read book, read my book. They are not using it, but they are defining it and they are saying, okay, we need to build our tools this way to take advantage of human uh, participation. Okay. But they are not saying it verse, which is reality, which is we are going to augment our intelligence. And you can apply it in all domain. We get, we get the example of the show, but go to uh, an artist who is using AI to get inspired. You want to do, for, do, for example, uh, a gallery presentation. You want ideas. And then he has some form or idea what he wants to see. He uses it as a prompt. And then the machine would generate some idea for him. And then he would like it or not, use his empathy again, check and pick what he likes and uh, reprompt again and again until he have some mock-up. And then, of course, if he's a real artist, not uh, a lazy one, he will go and touch it himself to give them his human touch or human creativity part. But this is again an limitation because you have again a generative tool that gives you pictures that help your imagination, let's call it augment its capacity. But if you use AI, and that's very funny, try to use the same prompts, the same software, and it will get always the same thing. And that's a proof somehow that this is a database. Because if you use the same prompt all the time, the same exactly prompt, you will get the same picture. This is not intelligence, I'm sorry. But it's still very positive and it can work with an artist to augment his creativity because he's somehow using his imagination to do a prompt can the machine is generating something for him he like it or not he will recycle it work it more and then the output that could be i don't know after hundreds of iterations and a lot of the human touch to, to images would be amazing and this is what i call in my book a new era of super intelligence but net super intelligent AI, like a lot of people want to achieve. No, it's the humans who will become super intelligent. It's a new generation 
super intelligent human that will reshape our society. I will go to the singularity that Kurzweil described very well, but this car, this time I call it this, the singularity of hope because it will be lead by human and it will be not lead by, let's call it emotionless machine. Do you see us augmenting as well through physical technology? A 007 contact lens where you put it in your eye and AI assists you? Definitely, yes. yes. And this is what the singularity is about. Because when you augment your intelligence, when are you going to use your intelligence? Practically in creating more and more tools, more and more software. Now programming is much easier because you can generate code. Now you can generate also using machine learning and AI algorithms, better uh, recognition algorithms, better recognitions softwares. So yes, if you can create more sophisticated AI tools using AI and human augmentation, you would finish by creating great tools that will augment your senses, augment your intelligence in all aspects of intelligence, not only text-based. But I believe today is the most ready one is the text-based. I don't believe other kind of generative AI is ready yet, but very promising. And the next one is voice and image recognition. This is, comes directly after text. It's advanced, but not as advanced as text. And we are going toward the world when we use generative AI everywhere. I like the enthusiasm of a lot of people like Sam Altman, when he talked about AGI. But if you apply the rule, the real rules of AGI, I think we are far away from real AGI. I think, think he is spending too much time implementing or chasing a dream. With a algorithmic situation today, that is not ready. I didn't see any people working on emotional intelligence. The, the magic of a human mind, we learn with love. That means starting from a baby and the love between parents and their baby, this is how baby learns. It's not by presenting data to the baby, not true. It is by love. And then even when you are a bigger kid is what by loving what you do. You can see a kid can learn how to do a game or a video game in minutes, but show him something, uh, inter I don't know, a picture that he doesn't like, he will never learn it even if you repeat it thousands of times. So we learn really with love, with the emotions. This is how a human learns. And until now, we didn't code love. I don't say it's impossible. I didn't see really the reasonable or credible research about it. I saw mimicking of a human expression, research. I saw that. They are trying to make a robot that mimic your expression when you are in love or but that's really coding love and, uh, and feelings. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying it will not happen. But because we didn't even start to that, I don't think it will happen within 5, 15 years. Now, let's go back to the augmentation by tools. It's something that will happen. I believe we'll develop very soon, within five years, better human machine interface, maybe code-based controllers for our computers and already because people like um, Elon Musk and other people, I have seen other people work on the shout out to David that we met in a panel. Remember, he was working on this as well. And I think it's something that will happen, that we will develop a human machine interface. I don't believe in the five to 15 years, we'll develop an impact inside our brain or rhythm of people. Maybe for therapeutic reason, yes, but for Normal people, it will become still a domain of don't approach it because it's somehow taboo. You are somehow modifying a human and people are afraid. Unless they are, I don't know, paralyzed and they need to, something like what Neuralink is doing. That's, I understand. But we'll develop human machine interface that will use our eyes, that will use our ears, that will use our even electromagnetic wave in the brain, control machine better and better. And using machine learning and AI will augment our emotional feeling. Go back to the emotional intelligence. It's two parts. Emotions, which is somehow inside our, let's call it brain. It's when the self is talking to the mind. But we have also feelings. And feelings are mostly physical things. Like you, you see something and you are in love. You have heart palpitation. 
Okay. Yes, there is emotional things, but there is feelings that are based on sensors and signals from the world around us, from the matrix, if you want to call it the matrix. Uh, I don't care. But the world around us, it gives us uh, feelings, which is can be captured using sensors. We will see in the upcoming five to 15 years, augmentation for our feelings, for our emotions, and then for our emotional intelligence. And this is, I believe, will, will be the emergence of uh, the new human that will be achieving great projects with very little effort. We'll solve a problem that seems very complex in much less smaller time. And here I agree with Kurzweil and a lot of futuristic that maybe we'll achieve solutions for impossible problems like now, like global warming, poverty, maybe extending our lifespan, the span of lifespan and existence of Earth with, with a healthy way. But it will not happen because we were creating super AI. It will happen because our human intelligence will be augmented and amplified. And I don't see a limit for that. We will create a loop and will achieve the singularity where new uh, innovation will happen every day. And we'll have uh, the prediction that some people said you will have a company of multi-billion dollars with two or three people, but you still need a human.